Hey guys, we're here at the 2018 Homesteaders of America conference and we want to show you the vendors of the conference. So let's go talk to some. Alright, we're here with Amanda from The Fundamental Home. She's a volunteer here at Homesteaders of America conference this year. And we want to talk about the vendors. The vendors are a big part of this event. What do the vendors mean to this conference? Well, the vendors are here just in a wonderful support role. Uh, they're here supporting both the conference financially in terms of making sure that there's uh, enough to provide for all the needs of the conference, but they're also here sharing their time and their knowledge. So they're all set up and all these wonderful tables and they're showing uh, their skills, they're showing their crafts, they're showing the things that they grow. Everything that's there just to help all the folks that are interested in homesteading learn the skills that they need in order to do it better. Have any of the vendors stood out to you or anything you've taken away from them? I mean, obviously we have Log Ox right here. I know that we've talked to them and they, they have such great tools that's helpful to everybody. There's, uh, and my gardener was here earlier sharing his seeds. And there's some that, that weren't even here, but they're, they are so much, and again, in a supportive role, like Baker Creek and Layman's because they've uh, sponsored different speakers and also given seeds, Baker Creek did, just to um, give away to folks and try to help them have better gardens next year. So there's, there's so many roles that a vendor can play that's helpful and we're really thankful for all the ones that did uh, help and support Homesteaders of America. Very cool, let's go check out some of the vendors. All right, we're here with Austin with Logox, one of the main sponsors for the Homesteaders of America conference. And thank you guys for being one of the sponsors. Yeah, thanks, Jake, for sure. And can you guys show us your products, how they work? Yeah, absolutely. So this right here I'm holding in my hand is the, uh, the base of the Logox 3-in-1 forestry multi-tool. And what this allows you to do is instead of bending over, picking up a log round, putting it onto your splitter, hurting your, your back, putting a lot of strain on it, what it allows you to do, and I'll show you real quick, drop it over the log like this by your side, lift up, the weight of the log actually keeps it engaged, put it onto your splitter right here, pick it up, holster it, and now I'm free to operate my splitter. I can operate my splitter, grab another piece, um, I can even pick up small split pieces with it if I want to, put a couple under my arm, and, uh, and save myself a trip. If you're working with smaller logs, obviously this would be a lot longer uh, in person. But what you're able to do is just drop this over like this, roll it back, and this does two things for you. One, it creates a nice solid cutting platform because the weight of the log itself is actually locking it right into the tool. And then on this side, which would obviously be a lot longer in person, you're now a lot more upright and you're able to just zip, zip, hot sawing right through this. Gravity is taking these off as you go. And instead of repositioning the timber jack, what we recommend doing, figuring out where those cuts you want to have those be, cut it halfway through, halfway through, and then when you release it, it'll lurch forward and it'll expose those back sides of the log and you make your cuts. And now we're back to square one. Perfect. Where do people find uh, out more? Where do they get the product at? Absolutely. So if you go to thelogox.com, uh, we have all of our gear there. Um, you can find us on Amazon. You can find us at Bailey's Online, Layman's, uh, carry it in stores, and also on their website. It's another sponsor here at the Homesteaders of America. But the best place to find us is, uh, is online at Big Blue Logox. That's our, our online social media account. Um, follow us there or at thelogox.com, best place to find us. And uh, we're just really excited to be here and happy to be sponsoring the show. It's our second year here and our first time as sponsors and uh, just a great community, great program. Um, and thanks to Amy for really for putting this on. This has been, it's been incredible. All right, we're here with Rebecca with Sobo Mobile Food Truck. And tell us about this food truck. You guys have been here now at the conference for two years. Yeah, this is our second year. And uh, what do you guys provide? We provide farm to face food because we don't have a table. So yeah, it's to your face. Um, I grow all the proteins on my farm. The pork, the beef, the chickens, and the really? turkeys all come from our farm. Yeah. Really? That's so cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's for real. That, that's really what it means, truly. Uh -huh. Read the truck. <laughs> oh, I know, but most people just source it from a farm. I didn't know no, it was no, from no, your no. farm. No, 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 it's from our farm. Okay. I was up at five o'clock this morning feeding pigs and okay. cows before I came here okay. to feed people. And what kind of food do you guys make? We have Mexican food. Mr. Bo is my partner, and um, it's his mommy's recipes, and we've taken them and sort of tweaked them to make them a little healthier. Uh, where do you guys normally, where do you take your trucks to? Anywhere there's happy drunk people. Yeah. So we do wineries, breweries, we do weddings, we do whatever events, and then these kind of gigs. Where can people find you at? 
if you look us up on SoboMobile.com or look us up on Facebook, um, that gives you a full rundown on where we're going to be. All right, we're here talking to Hanhune Farm. Who are you guys and, and what do you do? Yeah, uh, my name is Doug Wharton, my partner Andy Lane. We go around and teach people how to butcher their own animals, teach them how to go from uh, the pasture to the plate um, with ways that work for their families. Awesome. How did you guys come up with this idea? Uh, about 10 years ago when I started raising pigs on my homestead, there weren't a lot of resources available. And so we decided to just kind of wing it. Um, we learned a little bit over the, our process of how to not to do it, over pig after pig after pig, what went wrong. Um, we can, we are now experts at telling people what not to do, because yeah. we've done all of them the wrong way. Over time though, we've been able to bridge a gap between like the pragmatic, how do you take this animal and, and put it away, to how do you make really excellent food uh, and elevate the, the culinary element. If you're gonna go to all the trouble of raising the animal in the first place, use it, use all of it. What do you guys offer your customers? Okay, so uh, we do raise pigs just for uh, retail sale, and we sell those just locally. Um, you guys are in Ohio, is that right? Correct, yeah. But that's not, I love raising pigs. I love pigs, but retail cuts, that's like the lowest common denominator. Doing retail cuts is like asking a chef to make breakfast. You know, there's just, it's not awesome. There's something, it's, it's lacking the, the, the elevated quality that is possible with, with fresh pork. And so um, we also raise pigs, not for retail, but to host workshops on our farm. So we have our own on-farm butcher shop. We invite people in um, and we teach them how to do everything from cured meats to pâtés. Um, head cheese and blood sausage and everything in between. Um, we also go to other people's farms and host those same workshops there. How do people book those events? Well, they reach out to us through our website, handtunefarm.com, or they can go on our website if they're interested in coming to us, to our farm. We have a list of those workshops available. And come around and just whoop. Come back on this side and grab it, pull it. Before the last of the heat, we're gonna twist it back up. Push it against that back there just a little bit. And there you go. Hey guys, we are here with Joe with Premier One and we wanted to learn more about this fencing. Uh, you guys are one of the main sponsors here at the Homesteaders of America Conference. We really appreciate that. Thank you. And just wanted to uh, let people know about your product, what you guys provide. Uh, we provide a range of small farm supplies and electric fence. So that ranges from poultry feeders and water to sheep and goat equipment to, of course, electric fence. Um, I'm standing next to our poultry netting and this is a 50 foot roll that I have set up today and we go up to 164 feet. All the posts are already installed. It shows up to your door as a nice tidy bundle. So you just open up the bag, untie the ties and put your end post into the ground and just go on from there. Uh, we have solar energizers as well as battery and plug-in units available. So if you wanted to do a rotational system, it's not that hard to do. Uh, I can move a roll in about five to 10 minutes. Uh, we also have swine fences available and a few are here today, actually, as well as some sheep and goat, garden, and also a uh, shocker knot fence. So if you wanted to get your chicks out on grass early, uh, you can set that up. It has tight spacings at the bottom or a tight mesh at the bottom to keep them in. And then the outside's electrified so you get your, uh, get your predator protection there as well. What do people do if they don't know where to start? How do they find out what kind of fence? There's a lot of, you know, there's single spike, there's double spike, there's different heights and widths, and where do they go to, to find that information? You can go to our website, premieronesupplies.com, and you can sort by animal species, or if you have one of our catalogs, if you pick that up at the show, or you're already on the mailing list, it's more or less broken up by species. So what you need to determine from there is how often do you want to move the fence? Are you going to be moving it daily or weekly? Then you want to go with something that's more of a temporary style. So it has thinner posts and lighter conductors. If you're moving it once a month or so, it has a little bit thicker posts and it's going to maintain tension better over time with that style. That's yeah, it's, it's species and how often you want to move it and we can go running from there. So 
we're here with Elderberry Terry of River Hills Harvest. Show us what you're what you're up to. We're, you're from our neck of the woods, and you're out here in Virginia. Yes. You're we, from Missouri, Missouri, right? Yeah, but I've been a homesteader for 40 years, and I love homesteaders, and this is a good chance to get out here and meet some new young homesteaders yeah. and introduce them to elderberry and convince them to grow elderberries, that good medicine right in their own garden. All right, we're here with Janet from Free Range Yarn at Timber Creek Farm. And uh, show us what you do. Okay, so the um, the main premise of my business was to give small farm owners that raise fiber animals a outlet to sell their yarn um, at more events, and also to teach people about raising small flocks of fiber animals, either sheep, fiber goats, rabbits, or uh, llamas and alpacas are the most common fiber animals that we usually see people raising in a small setting. I think the color is gorgeous. Is there, what goes into mm. dyeing the yarn? Well, over here, let me show you some of the products over here because these are, um, a, there's a little bit more variety over here. We use different substances like matter root, um, indigo, black walnut, the yellow can be from many different kinds of sources. Um, weld is a plant. Uh, you can use onion skins, goldenrod, apple bark. Um, the pinks are primarily from pokeberry, which is a common weed that grows in lots of people's yards and they don't like it. Um, That's such a pretty color. I actually do keep the pokeberries. Uh, green is a hard color to develop. You need to be able to mat to mix. Um, mix some dyes to get some nice pretty greens. There aren't very many naturally occurring green dyes in nature even though you see green all over it really gives you a yellow. Where do people find you at? Where do they find your products? So on the website I'm at TimberCreekFarmer.com and we're on Facebook under Timber Creek Farm, Instagram Timber Creek Farm and Homestead. And they can buy the products right at they your website? They can buy the products from the website or okay. from the Etsy shop which you can get to from the website.